you understand what you're doing, you know, why do you exist in whatever world that you're playing in? Um, is it fun, right? In your first five minutes, you should see there should be a reason for you to come back and keep playing and, and uh, have additional play sessions, right? So just really kind of building on our past experiences and where we've done things wrong, I think, in the past on the more traditional sort of uh, development approach. Um, you know, you probably end up with less content in the long run, but we kind of always ask ourselves, well, when have you played a game that was short but was totally amazing that you didn't want more, right? As opposed to games that had tons of content but it was kind of like, meh. You know, you probably don't even see most of the content. And so we'd much rather err on that side and say, the experience that you have is absolutely fantastic. You're left w wanting more, and there will be more, right, as a result of it. So, um, Real quickly, jumping back to user-created content, um, it's, I know you've been, you guys have been working on this for a while, and there are other, other developers working on games that tap into that. But it's kind of fascinating when you look at uh, the release of Spore and the upcoming release of Little Big Planet how both those games are sort of uh, really focused on that um, and, and so focused that in, in some aspects that they're almost providing just sort of, uh, I think Little Big Planet, the people there have said that their great expectation is that they're basically pro providing a palette and they want people to create with that palette. So it's more about creation than an experience. Do you think that, how is LEGO Universe going to, is, is it going to be more like that or do you think it's something that you guys are hoping will be more about the adventures people have than the creation? We definitely set out, when we, when we first started working on the project, uh, we looked really closely at a lot of the stuff that was out there, a lot of stuff was coming, um, <clears throat> and we decided specifically we wanted a framework of an experience that there was a purpose for you to exist in this world to the point you are here to build, right, as a minifig. It actually works into the, uh, into the backstory as a literal point, the way that you kind of combat the conflict that's going on in the universe is to actually build and create. So there's a purpose behind it that, that, that ties everything together. Um, so it isn't just a sort of a sandbox world where it's like, oh, you can get in here and play around with some toys and that's fun for a while, but there's actually a motivation behind it in some sense, right? I, I kind of look at it, if you think of a, <clears throat> like a Lego box on the shelf, right? You go and buy it and there's a, a picture on the box of what you can build with that set, right? And you know that if you buy that, it's going to have all the pieces for that and there will be building instructions so you can figure out how to do it. <clears throat> but you can also take it apart and rebuild and add it to other sets and make all kinds of different things, right, whatever you want to. And so that's really kind of the similar metaphor that we're looking at. It's, if you think of that as a, a starting point to a story, it's like, well, I can build this car or this building or this spaceship. Um, where does your imagination take you from there? Because now you can recombine it in different ways, right? But that there was an initial purpose for it, right? As opposed to, let's say, the bucket of Lego brick, which is also cool, but doesn't have that directed experience to kickstart you. Um, w there's been a lot of uh, interesting sort of industrial or industry news going on about uh, the MMO, uh, different sort of MMO companies having issues either going under or in the case of... Um, of NCSoft, they've completely restructured what they want to do and now are trying to refocus on like AAA titles. Are, is this sort of, are you guys getting concerned? I mean, you're working on an MMO, obviously, you've got a little while before you come to market. Um, it seems like people are starting to think that maybe WoW is like going to destroy anything that kind of comes out into this, into this genre now. I mean, what do you think? Uh, no, I don't worry about that at all because I think... <clears throat> That view might be true if you have a very narrow look at the market, right? What we're, what we're on the verge of right now that you can see we has actually kind of tiptoed into is we are really, as an industry, about to go mainstream. I, you can make arguments we're kind of there already, but not really, right? When, when grandma's actually playing games all the time, we're mainstream, right? When everybody at family picnics are getting together and talking about the games they're playing, that's mainstream, right? In the online space, in MMO specifically, I don't think that there's too much that's actually touching those markets, right? WoW is still, generally speaking, a hardcore player's game, right? Grandma's not going to play that. I mean, yes, there are the occasional anecdotal stories of, you know, actually I have a friend whose mother-in-law plays, for example, but it, I think that there's a lot of opportunity. I think Leggy Universe is, is one of those opportunities, right, of actually hitting people way beyond the, uh, the current sort of gaming and online gaming market specifically. Uh, and as far as the competition question, I mean, I welcome any competition that's out there. These there's a lot of people that are chasing the space because, you know, you can do the math, right? These kinds of games seem really profitable. And it's like, oh, it's easy, man. We can just spend, you know, a few million bucks, and then we're going to have 10 million users, and, you know, World of Warcraft, look how much money that makes. Well, it takes a lot more than that. And I think if you talk to anybody that's actually shipped an MMO, they kind of understand these are some of the most complex software projects to actually manage 
um, on the planet that aren't involved with maybe space travel or something like that, right? So there's just a lot of things um, that I think a lot of people don't take into account. Uh, or even you look at something like a, you know, a Club Penguin that's come out, and people kind of trivialize how easy it was for that thing to get up and running and, and to get the momentum that it had. And I don't think it is that easy, right? And we're well aware of that. Uh, you know, we've been in business for 11 years. Uh, we've had definitely our share of mistakes, and we've learned from that and built. And, and uh, I'm really confident, actually, both with uh, Net Devil's philosophies and the, and the kind of projects that we've got, uh, that we're going to be in a, a market leader position. Do you think that uh, the fact that the platform is PC is some hindrance to tapping into casual gamers? I mean, a lot of there's this argument, and I think the Wii, in many ways, is built around this argument that you need to have something very simplistic. You know, it looks like a TV remote, and it's very innocuous. It sort of hides in the corner, sure. versus a PC, which to some people is just scary. Sure, that's a great question, and I would say absolutely not. It's exactly the opposite. If you look at install bases, numbers, where are casual games actually being played? PC, mobile phones is another one. But PC, you know, the whole Yahoo gaming phenomenon and all of that kind of thing, where most of this casual industry sprung up from is all PC. The install base of a PC is something, uh, I can't remember the exact number I just heard the other day, it was 250 million or 300 million in the world of PCs sort of capable of running games in general, right? Not that they're anywhere near as powerful, a large chunk of those as, uh, as the current generation of console hardware is, but um, it, it's, it's an interesting, it is this interesting perception that the industry has, I guess in some sense, but I think it's completely the opposite, right? PC is actually where most of the casual people live, and some of those people are starting to get into consoles more. So from the console space, um, I think they're just starting to understand the casual experience has some value to it. From the PC side, we've seen that for a long time, I think. Okay, so one specific question about uh, uh, LEGO Universe. How are you guys going to... Um Actually, maybe this isn't a limit, but have, can you talk at all about customization of minifigs? Like, are you limited to what exists currently when it comes to something like minifigs, or do you think you'll be able to broaden that beyond what exists in the physical? Um, <laughs> I, can't, I can't comment too specifically on that, although uh, I guess what I'll say is we're being very conscious of what people expect uh, to have from the Lego Universe experience, and we're definitely trying to deliver on that. So. So no bird shirt, no bird shirt for the minifig. Is that what you? <laughs> uh, okay, that's it. I think. Cool.